We are discussing Newton's laws of motion. There, the first law says that a body continues to be in state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line until acted upon by an external agent. That is known as a force. So, Newton's first law gives us a qualitative definition of force. Qualitative definition of force. So, we can define force in that way. That force. So, this is the definition of force. So, a force is a pull or a push which changes or tends to change. That means, tries to change the state of rest or uniform motion along a straight line of the body. Now, second law says that, Newton's second law says that the rate of change of, rate of change of linear momentum of a body is directly proportional, is directly proportional to the force applied and the change takes place in the direction of force and the change takes place in the direction of force. So from second law you know, you know the linear momentum of the body is denoted by P small p such that P is equal to m times v. m is mass and v is velocity of the body. Now, so as per second law, you know, the rate of change with respect to time d dt of mv is proportional to f. So f is force on the body. Right. So therefore we can write m dv dt is proportional to force. Therefore m a proportional to force. Therefore, m a is equal to some constant into force. So, in scalar you can write this m a equal to k into f. Because a and f are in same direction, obviously, these are all scalar. So, when a vector is multiplied by a scalar, you know the direction does not change. So, m a equal to k f. Now, we will make this k1. How? Say we choose we choose uh, the unit of force such that such that uh, one unit of force acting on unit mass produces unit acceleration unit acceleration so this is how you choose the unit of force so, for example, in SI system, the unit of mass is kg, for acceleration is meter per second square. So, for force, it's Newton. So, we can write one Newton force when applied on a body, on a body of mass 1 kg produces acceleration produces acceleration of 1 meter per second square that is it so this is the newton's second law okay now <coughs> sorry so by second law you can write f equal to ma now Suppose you are considering motion of a body in three dimensional space. So the acceleration may have components like this. Ax times i cap plus Ay times j cap plus Az times k cap. So the force also may have components. Fx times i cap plus Fy times j cap plus Fz times k cap. Now you know F equal to ma. That means you can write Fx i cap plus f y j cap plus f z k cap equal to now m into a x i guess so i can separate it like this so m into a y times j cap plus m into a z times k cap so therefore 
we can separately write these equations along x, y and z axis. See f x equal to m x, f y equal to m a y and f z equal to m times a z. This is the thing we can write. So that means we can apply Newton's law. We can apply Newton's law independently. So independently along uh, mutually perpendicular directions. Mutually perpendicular directions. That means the acceleration in the y axis is not affected by the force in the x axis or z axis and vice versa. The force in the z axis do, uh, does not have any impact on the acceleration in x or y axis. Force in z axis has no impact on acceleration in x axis and y axis because they are mutually perpendicular directions. Okay. This is proved from vectors only. Now, what are the types of forces? We will discuss third law a bit later. Okay. What are the types of forces? Force is contact force. Basically, very briefly I will discuss. There are many types of classification of forces. Strong force, weak force. I will not go into that. So, basically one is contact force, another is non-contact force. Contact force happens due to direct contact. Suppose there is a, a block and you are trying to push the block. So, when you are, you are actually pushing the block, then the force applied by you on the block is contact force. This is the contact force. And what is the non-contact force? Non-contact force, suppose gravity is a non-contact force. Say this is earth. And suppose you have a, an apple. This is what helped Newton frame his laws, the falling apple. So an apple on a tree Right. So the apple feels a force due to earth. Where it is the force? The force is downward. F. So, so F is weight. So it is given by M times G. So it is weight of apple. So here this is non-contact force. See earth is not directly in contact with the apple. So it's non-contact force and some more contact forces like this say this block suppose a block is at rest on ground so there is a normal reaction of ground R normal reaction of ground on the body or the block okay see whenever surfaces are in contact if these are smooth surfaces, the force between the surface is normal. It doesn't have any tangential component. For rough surfaces, you have tangential component. For smooth, you don't have. That tangential component of force is known as friction. That we will study in a later chapter. Okay. Now, Newton's third law. As per third law, it says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So what does it mean that? That means that say, let's try out this diagram. Here. In this diagram, the person is applying the force F to the block. So in return, the block will apply force F onto the person. See, their, their magnitudes are same, but directions are just the reverse. So vectorially, this F and this F are not same. Rather, their vector sum is zero, right? But magnitude-wise, they are same, but direction is just reverse, or, or, opposite of the other. Now see here, this is the normal reaction of ground on the body. 
so the body the block will also apply this force on ground this is force on ground by the block okay suppose this force is force on the person by the block and this is force on block by the person okay so every action has an equal and opposite reaction so can you say here what is the equal and opposite reaction to this see earth attracts the apple with the force f is equal to mg so the apple will also attract the earth this is a force on earth on earth by apple so that's third law action and reaction are equal and opposite but they act on different bodies suppose there are two blocks two blocks suppose they are moving we will solve a problem based on this suppose two blocks some of they are moving there is a, another force which makes it move both the block move so a and b so there is a surface of contact between the blocks this is the contact contact between the blocks so here block a will apply force on b in which direction see there is there is no tangential force there is no sliding tendency here so there is no friction so a will apply force on block in which direction so a applies force on b in this direction and b apply force on a in this direction these two have equal magnitudes but direction is opposite so that is why they are vector sum is zero vector sum of this force and this force is equal to zero so let us solve some problems on newton's laws of motion simple problems first first problem like this a block just standing on ground it's having mass 5 kg and g is equal to 10 m per second square here you um, take g as 10 only if it's not given also you can consider g to be 10 to ease out the calculations so find normal reaction of ground on the block okay so here while solving the problem while solving all problems you have to make a free body diagram of block free body diagram written as fbd what is free body diagram a diagram showing the body separated from surroundings and all the forces are shown forces are shown okay so that's a free body diagram now what is a free uh, or see what are the forces on the block from here you can see what are the forces on the block so r to attract the block will with force mg so its weight so mg equal to 50 newton and the ground will give a normal reaction normal reaction of ground so now comes the free body diagram of the block these are the forces 
50 newton and this is r due to all these forces what is happening the block is at rest so block is at rest means the the net force is zero the net force is equal to zero that means vector sum of this and this force equal to zero so numerically they have to be equal so r is equal to 50 newton that's it we can't write r equal to minus 50 you see r is the magnitude of the normal reaction right these two vectors these two vectors will add on to give zero when their magnitudes are equal because their directions are reverse or opposite okay number two here in this problem there is a lift lift is accelerating upwards a is say 3 meter per second square and there you have a block block of mass 5 kg okay find apparent weight of block inside lift what is apparent weight it is a normal reaction of floor normal reaction of lift floor on the block see actually the weighing machine doesn't know that uh, whether the lift moves or not weighing machine reads the normal reaction on it right so in place of ground if you place a little weighing machine here so that the block will press the machine with a certain force machine will apply a force upward same as the force applied by ground okay so suppose so these are the forces so forces weight is 50 newton and ground reaction or apparent weight of block is r suppose apparent weight happens to be r so here you can draw the free body diagram it is a small problem so i'm not going to next page for this okay so that's r see the body is separated from the surroundings only the forces are drawn and the acceleration is drawn see acceleration is 3 meter per second square okay so the acceleration is in upward direction right so acceleration is in upward direction so this direction is positive so what is the net force on the body so you know f equal to ma what is f see as this upward direction has to be positive because you have to consider the forces in uh, so f equal to ma right so all the forces in the direction of a are positive opposite to the direction of a has to be negative so the net forces r minus 50 equal to 5 into a so r equal to 65 newton so inside a lift if your weight is taken you will weigh more inside a lift if the lift if the lift accelerates upwards then if it accelerate downwards then you will weigh less inside the lift than normal I mean than standing on ground okay. say there is a block of mass 5 kg and the force given is 10 newton this is applied force on the block a force of 10 newton is applied on block as shown in figure so that i don't have to write all those statements describe so as shown in figure means as shown in figure as it is okay to find acceleration of the block So obviously block will accelerate in the horizontal direction there is no other way it it can't uh, break the floor and go inside ground 
neither can it uh, jump up so it has to accelerate this way so let a be acceleration a b acceleration of the block now okay find acceleration of the block and also there is one more part of the problem that find normal reaction of ground find normal reaction of ground on the block so let's draw the free body diagram this is the force 10 and this is 50 normal reaction r say normal reaction will be r and this is the due to all this this is the final outcome it is having acceleration a so now we can apply that concept that the independence between the perpendicular axis so here i'll choose two axes x here in the direction of a i can choose one of the axes that will make my job easier so this is x axis perpendicular to this is y axis so that is all about the free body diagram so we apply newton's law in x axis separately and y axis separately when you are looking at the x axis don't even look at this this uh, forces in the y axis okay so there is no need because they don't depend they are mutually um, independent so if you have a force in y axis how does that matter to the x axis doesn't matter it's like it is like solving two problems separately one along x and one along i y if possible at start i'll suggest you one technique just draw the x axis forces so that's 10 and this is a acceleration and for y axis just you can uh, draw the y axis so this 50 and this is r this is acceleration in the a x axis so you can write 10 equal to 5a so therefore a equal to 2 meter per second square and here in the y axis the acceleration is 0 because it's moving in x axis it's neither going up nor coming down so you can write r is equal to 50 see in the y axis it's at rest in the x axis it is moving with acceleration 2 meter per second so that's it find acceleration of the block 2 meter per second square find normal reaction 50 newton that is the answer Now suppose you have a block, similar questions, you have a block, get used to this concept, so I am giving similar question one after the other. See this is, this happens to be 10 Newton force and this angle happens to be 37 degree and so g is 10 obviously it's not given so if it is not given you can consider g as 10 so here same thing is asked find acceleration of the block and and the normal reaction of ground on the block So here the acceleration of the block is obviously in horizontal direction but you have to check actually whether if this vertical component of the force is more than the weight then it will go up but here as you see the values it's not possible. So see this is acceleration so you can choose this axis wherever you have an acceleration you can choose an axis the x-axis and perpendicular to that is y-axis that will make your job easy because in in x-axis you have this acceleration a and in y-axis 
you have zero acceleration because it's it's having no component right total acceleration is itself a so if you consider x axis along a that will make your job easier okay so let's uh, decompose or let's resolve the forces right into its components so this will be how much 10 30, 10 cos 37 is how much 10 cos 37 so cos 37 is 4 by 5 i am talking about this this one 10 cos 37 so it's 8 so this is 8 newton and this one is 10 sin 37 equal to 10 multiplied by 3 by 5 so 6 newton so this is 6 newton and what else are the forces here 50 see 50 is way larger than 6 but there is no question of flying leaving contact with ground now this is reaction R okay so consider it if you want to see I will suggest you to draw a free body diagram always just you remove this ground or uh, for the time being from your mind you can remove this ground but during exam it is suggested to draw free body diagram now that will do Achha. so Newton's law in x axis and Newton's law along y axis so in x axis I'll follow that technique for x axis just forget about y I forget I try to forget it so much that I'm not drawing even the forces so that's acceleration a so simple as that 8 equal to 5a so therefore a equal to 8 by 5 meter per second square while this is the acceleration of the block dealing with the x-axis Newton's law is sufficient to find acceleration of the block that's it now for the y-axis what are the forces this R this 6 and that's 50 so in the y-axis the block is at rest in y-axis the block is at rest so it is having zero acceleration so the vector sum of force has to be zero so the net force up equal to net force down so R plus 6 is a force up and 50 is a force down. So reaction equal to this is how much? 44, right? 44 Newton. So that's normal reaction of ground. You can try out one by yourself. Simple only, just changing the direction. Suppose this is 20 Newton at our favorite angle, 37 degree, because you get rational fellows, and that's 5 kg. Find acceleration of the block, of the block, and the ground reaction and normal reaction of ground so you try on your own I will tell you the answers 20 at 16 so it will have an acceleration this way A will be how much 16 by 5 meter per second square and ground reaction R will be equal to uh, 62 Newton I guess Four, three, twelve. yeah right so you draw the free body diagram and try it out yourself 